and genetics. This is important to understand because another researcher named Vladimir Popinov measured tiny particles of light called photons inside a vacuum tube. The photons were scattered as expected. A sample of DNA was then entered into the vacuum tube and they measured the photons again. They found that the particles of light aligned themselves along the axis of the DNA. Then, as they removed the DNA sample, the photons remained aligned to the same form of the DNA even though no DNA was present. This is what is known as the phantom DNA experiment. Science has now bridged a very important gap between physical and ethereal, or spiritual. Our emotions directly affect the structure of our DNA, which directly shapes the physical world we experience every day. So the messages left by the ancients that we've explained here were more than just prophecies about a one world government or a new world order. We now understand why the study of the heavenly bodies were so important. The rotation and orbit of all that makes up our universe serves as a clock to map changes and transitions. This helped the ancients understand that the change of the heavenly bodies were a mirror to the changes of all existence. December 21st, 2012 is simply a natural transition from one form of energy to the next, the transcendental evolution of man. This date is what's known as zero point. Our sun, as well as our planet Earth, is losing its magnetic field as the Earth is slowing in its rotation. All the while, its base resonant frequency, also known as the Schumann cavity resonance, is increasing in accordance with the predictable sequence of the Fibonacci theory. At a cellular level, our bodies respond to an electromagnetic pulse. The ancients called this the sacred circuit. The cells receive this pulse from the brain, which receives its pulse from the heart, which receives its pulse from the earth. This pulse comes from the solar system, which from there comes from the galaxy, which ultimately comes from our entire universe. We literally share a pulse with all of existence. Yet another example of everything being one. For as long as scientists have been recording the Earth's pulse, it has remained at approximately 7.8 cycles per second. This was a constant fixed number until 1986 into 1987. It rapidly began increasing to about 9 cycles per second in 1996. So in one decade, it increased by about 2 cycles per second. By 2012, this pulse will be right around 13 cycles per second, just as the Fibonacci theory indicates. What does this mean for humanity? Just as cymatics has shown that higher frequencies result in more complex patterns, we are now experiencing the beginning of a major shift in both physical and spiritual vibration. It's difficult to understand what exactly will happen to our physical bodies. But ancient scriptures, pagan and monotheistic religions, mystery schools, and secret fraternal orders have all given indications as to what this experience will be like. This will be the shift of the ages, the transcendental period of monumental changes to humanity. Those unprepared for this transition will likely not be able to cope with the rapid changes in the psyche. The only way to prepare for what is to come is what we have sought after for our entire lives. Truth. Not the truth about governments, commerce, religions, terrorism, or anything external, but the truth within ourselves, within our psyche and our shadow self. Especially in Western cultures, we are taught that being normal means only being happy and never sad, only loving and never angry, only forgiving and never jealous. This sounds plausible, but it is not. We are not meant to repress any negative emotions because it causes imbalance. To conquer our emotions, we must embrace them, not fight them. We must acknowledge them and allow them to serve their purpose as we learn from them. The ancient Essene culture left teachings dating back about 6,000 years. They taught that our relationships with one another, with the universe, and with situations and events are mirrors of the parts of our psyche that need to be cleansed. Author Greg Braden beautifully explains this entire segment at great length in his work. His hard work and understanding of these subjects contributed largely to the marriage between science and spirituality. It is very important to understand that when you fear loss, fear death, fear war, fear terrorism, or fear change, you are giving others the ability to control you based on those fears. When you fight against poverty or against racism, when you fight for relationships or for freedom, 
you are outwardly attempting to repress that which has been placed before you to conquer inwardly. These situations are mirrors of our fears. This is why it is important to love and only love. Love those who stand with you, but especially those who stand against you. Don't look at your fears as a threat. Rather understand that this material world is only a physical manifestation of either the love or fear in your consciousness. It's as plain as day. All you need to conquer in your life is in your face. If you want to understand what your true inner fears are, analyze your ambitions and your inhibitions. Everything explained here about the esoteric agenda of the elite few at the very top is nothing to fear. They have been at work for thousands of years behind the scenes to manipulate humanity. And it has worked. Until now.